Holy shit! Finally, FSR4 is working on the RX 7000 series, and no, this is not clickbait, it is actually working, and not on Linux, on Windows 11 as well. I knew it was coming, but I didn't know that it would be right now. I was roaming the internet uh, for like, like two hours ago or something like that, and I saw several posts, this was one of those, saying FSR4 working in Cyberpunk 2077 on RDNA 7900 XTX Windows 11. So I was like, well, what's going on? This must be something where people think they are using FSR4, but they're actually using XESS or something else. And no, it is actually FSR4. The original poster called Athlete Dependent 926 actually says FSR SD leak contained FSR4 files that work on practically any modern GPU, including RDNA 3, and we're talking about the int 8 files that were leaked with the FidelityFX SDK 2.0, where they actually released the DLL files for the um, uh, for FSR4, we actually had some leak with int8 code, basically FSR4 is now running on FP8, and FP8 is not supported by the older GPUs, only RDNA4, but int8 is supported by RDNA3 and several older GPUs. And that means that AMD was doing something similar to the thing that we have with XCSS, where XCSS runs better in terms of performance and image quality on Intel cards, because it uses XCMX in instructions, but then uses DP4A instructions for all the other GPUs, which means that the quality isn't that great and the performance impact is worse, or it's bigger, but it works. Like today's sponsor, that also works. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall. Bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. When AMD updated their FidelityFX repo on GitHub, they accidentally pushed files that they were not supposed to. This includes files required to compile your own FSR4 DLL. However, there were also FSR4 int8 files, like I was telling you, int8 being something many GPUs can run as opposed to FP8. With time, people managed to compile and run this int8 FSR4 on GPUs ranging from RDNA 2 and RDNA 3 to even an RTX 3060 Ti. The image quality of the int8 version is substantially superior to FSR 3.1 and also resolves hair and distant detail better than XCSS, which is also an int8 model. Hmm, I, didn't, I didn't actually know that um, XCSS was int8 as well. It uses DPA4 instructions, but it seems it is also an int8 model. Interesting. The only downside is that it can be expensive to run, taking up almost triple the processing power of FSR 3.1 on RDNA 3, 0.6 versus 1.9 milliseconds, and quadruple the processing power of Transformer DLSS on the RTX 3060 Ti, so this is obviously more for the RDNA 3 GPUs. This model was surprisingly designed to run on RDNA 4, though they later decide to go with FP8, which, while lowering the processing power requirements. Oh, yeah, uh, so basically it seems that they were they were firstly doing FSR4 with int8, but in order to run it better, they switched to FP8. That's actually very interesting. I would estimate that a fully optimized FSR4 for RDNA 3 could be faster than XCSS while providing superior image quality. Even the leaked one could achieve that if it was compiled with WMMA support. As for RDNA 2, which doesn't support WMMA instructions, you'd have either a smaller model with worse image quality that doesn't take up as much processing power, or the same model as RDNA 3, which would heavily reduce FPS at modes like native AA and NVIDIA GPU support, like, well, whatever. And again, I thought this was bullshit and this wasn't working, but it actually is. Now, there are some, some ways that you can make FSR4 work. In some, in some games, you actually need uh, the SDK. You need to download the SDK and then update to the 3.1.5 and then just change the, the, the file that you have here. By the way, this file can be downloaded. I will leave the link in the description. This post has the link and you can download it via LimeWire. And again, it's working, but let's cut to the chase and let's go into it. All I had to do to make this work with Cyberpunk 2077, for example, is going to the, the games folder. In this case, I believe it's program files, got galaxy games, 
Cyberpunk 2077, then go to the bin folder, x64, the usual thing that you do for OptiScaler. So the original state would be like this, FidelityFX underscore the x12, and what you need to do is basically just rename it to dot old. Then you go to the FidelityFX SDK that you also have the link in the description, then go to kits, FidelityFX, bin, and then copy these three files, the three DLL files, the frame generation loader and upscaler, copy it to the game folder. Instead of having the loader, you rename it to just FidelityFX underscore the X12. And then you copy this new file, this new upscaler file, just copy it to the folder and replace with the one from the SDK. And it's done. So we're now in the game and you can see the RX 7900 XTX in the corner and we're running 1440p ultra wide with around 100 FPS, which is not that much to be honest. And we're not using any kind of upscaling. So it's just here. As you can see, no upscaling whatsoever, 1440p ultra wide native. And even with native quality, it still shimmers uh, in some parts of the, um, well, in, in some parts of the map. For example, if you look at um, the park cables there, they shimmer a bit there. Uh, if you look, for example, at the rails here, they also shimmer a bit. Now, as soon as you go into the options, again, this is working. You have FidelityFX 2.1, FidelityFX 3, and FidelityFX 4. Now, let's remember, let's go cancel. Let's use, for example, the 3.1. With the 3.1, we have 131 FPS, and if you look there, we see shimmering there, we see shimmering there, and we see a lot of shimmering there, especially in the park cables, so it doesn't really work that well, and we're talking about the quality mode. FSR4, bam, the shimmering just went away. Look at the park cables basically perfect and we went from 130 to 110 fps of course that the performance impact is great but the image quality increase is also very very good in some scenarios in terms of shimmering and so on being even better than native look for example at taa native in this game you can see that the lamppost had a lot of shimmering and now with fsr4 quality it just works and the performance is still quite good which is really, really impressive. And if you think, well, this is just XSS working or something, it really isn't. You can definitely see the added clarity from, uh, from FSR4. And again, this might not deliver the same, and I believe that it doesn't deliver the same quality as the FP8 model. I believe it doesn't, but it brings much, much better quality than whatever FSR3 or FSR3.1 do. It's just a huge and insane difference is not even comparable. And by the way, I can go, let's say, I can go very, very low to performance mode. And in performance mode, we're upscaling from 540p, which is insanely low. We can use performance mode and we don't really have that much shimmering. I mean, we're upscaling from 540p on a car that isn't even supposed to use FSR4 and it just works. Even in terms of the quality, the weapon, look at the weapons. It's 540p performance mode at 1440p ultra wide, and it works pretty decently. I mean, this is actually insane. We only have some shimmering when we're moving, but I mean, the resolution, the internal resolution is so low that it's quite normal. As soon as we go a bit, a bit up, let's say balanced mode, let's see what we get here. The model changes and is actually interesting because in the balanced mode uh, we have more ghosting because I believe that since the model changed the ghosting is also more pronounced with the balanced mode. But in terms of overall sharpness since the internal the internal resolution is quite better it is also much much better and of course if we go to the quality mode yeah, we still <laughs> yeah, that, that's one of the things. This is kind of a beta, a beta of FSR4 for the, the older cards, and that's why we have this thing. So we kind of have, as you can see, in quality mode, the general the general quality is much, much better, not even comparable. But those little things, those little details, we kind of have a bit of ghosting. It's really, really impressive what we can get with five 40p internal resolution. This is just insane. And again, this is the int 8 model. The FP8 works even better. Again, going to no upscaling whatsoever. No upscaling whatsoever. We have 99, 101. So we don't really gain FPS in the quality mode at 1440p ultra wide. Let's try again. So 
97. As soon as we go to FSR 4 quality, we go to 102. So we barely get any frame rates when using FSR 4 quality. But I must tell you that the, the quality is very, it's very good. I mean, in a 34 inches monitor like this one, you can't really say the difference in between FSR 4 quality and native. It's hard to say in some scenarios in terms of temporal stability, for example, FSR 4 is even better. Uh, in some scenarios, not really. But I mean, you don't really get that much performance. But again, you can go to something like balanced and it still looks decently well. And you get a bit of FPS boost. Not much, of course, but a bit. And with the official implementation, the performance might be and most likely will be better but it's working. If you want to use it right now, it is working. And if you are using higher resolutions like 4K, you'll notice a bigger difference in terms of performance. Even at 1440p balanced mode, it's working. Now, games like Cyberpunk 2077, of course, they, they, they do benefit from using FSR 4 in terms of quality, but those aren't really the games that benefit the most. Games like Black Myth Wukong are the real games that benefit the most because the FSR implementation in this game is so so bad, really, so bad, that even using this modded or this pre-compiled beta version of FSR 4 makes a huge difference. Well, in this case, I'm using OptiScaler, and all I had to do is install OptiScaler and then copy that same file to the folder, to the game's folder where OptiScaler is installed, overwrite the, the OptiScaler file, and it just works. It just works. It shows up here, as you can see, FSR 4.0.2. Now, let's go back, for example, to 3.1.5, and let me tell you that FSR 3.1.5 in this game looks already much, much better than the official FSR implementation. And look at it, we can already see a lot of instability. And as soon as I start attacking, for example, you can see that there are lots of pixelation around the character. It's just not good to look at. For example, here, lots of pixelation around the weapon around the movements, around the translucent pixels. As you look, for example, there at a water, you can see it looks like crap. This is one of the worst points of FSR 3.1.4 or 3.1.5, FSR 3 in general. And believe me, the official implementation looks much worse than the one that you're looking at right now, much worse. So this is already an improvement over the official implementation. But as soon as we go and we use FSR 4.0.2, change up scaler, bam, look at the quality, it looks much better immediately, and we do lose FPS, of course we do, but let's let's now go to the same place, and again, this is a mod, this is with OptiScaler, this is an early int 8 version, now let's start attacking, basically no pixelation around the weapon, it just handles things much, much better, as you can see, Remember that we do have an FPS loss in this case scenario. Let's say that I'm using FSR, let's say FSR 3.1.5. We have 69 FPS and when going to 4.0.2, we have 64. So in this game, the difference isn't really that much, to be honest. It's much less than I was expecting. And if we're going to, let's say XESS, we can also do that. With XESS, we have 66. So very little difference whatsoever. Now look, for example, at the leaves here. We're using XESS and we don't really have much ghosting, to be honest. The, the quality is kind of decent, but if you look at these leaves, they look kind of smudged out. As soon as we move to FSR 3.1.5, we can see that the leaves, well, they are sharper, but the detail isn't just there. And if we look at the leaves running around here, uh, we have a bit of ghosting, pixelation around there. Uh, it is what it is. But as soon as we move to 4.0.2, the detail there, the fine detail is vastly improved. And if you look at the leaves going around, if you look there, for example, where we had lots of pixelation, we don't really have that pixelation anymore. It just works much, much better. So it's a vast 
and major improvement compared to what we had before. And this is with FSR quality because if we go to the settings and decrease to performance mode, this is where the difference appears. Let's start with XESS performance mode. And you can, you can immediately see that we do have a bit of shimmering there with XESS, because again, we are upscaling from 540p, so there are no miracles. Uh, the leaves still maintain some detail, not that much, but again, we now have shimmering. With FSR 3.1.5, it is a complete mess. So if we look at the leaves falling down here, we can only see pixels, like lots of pixels. The, there are no fine details. The images aren't even kind of watchable. It, it's kind of visual pollution there. It's 540p, but as soon as we go to FSR 4.0.2, bam, much more watchable. We still have issues because we are upscaling from such a low resolution, but we still have detail here on the leaves and these leaves on the top do bring detail and we don't have the shimmer that we had before with XSS and FSR 3.1.5. So it's a major improvement. Um, we are playing a game upscaled from four, from 540p, sorry, and it is still playable. I mean, it is not the best quality that you can, that you can have, of course, but it is still playable, which is something that wasn't before. And believe me, the official implementation in quality mode looks much, much worse than using performance mode with FSR 4. Uh, it is what it is. The, the official implementation in this game is just crap. Uh, while FSR 4 performance here, even upscaling from 540p can look better. This is the reality. In some games, even when not gaining that much performance, FSR 4 is a must for older GPUs like the RDNA 3 ones. Just crazy, just crazy. And well, guys, that's all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. More videos will come, of course, testing other cards. Leave your comment in the comment section and let me know if you want to use FSR4 or not, or if you already did, let me know how it went because I really want to know. Thank you very much and see you in the next video. Cheers.